This is me preparing to milk a nut. We are milking nuts. Well, not a nut per se. We're actually milking an oat. And the oats go up this tube to be washed in that. Why? Well, the dairy industry has been waging a war. It's a war against plant-based milks made from stuff like soy, oats, coconut flax, cashews, hemp, and almonds. They're basically saying they shouldn't be called milk, and the Trump administration seems to agree. Their logic has something to do with nipples. And, um, you know, an almond doesn't lactate, I will uh, confess. Hi, I'm Yara. And I take almond milk every morning with my coffee. Did I get that with almond milk? Almond milk? Almond milk. But my almond milk is under attack. For years, the dairy industry has tried to ban its plant-based rivals from using terms like milk, yogurt, and cheese. There's been lawsuits against almond milk. The almond milk does not have the same nutritional content. There's been a push for new laws. A new act is hoping to stop the misuse of the term milk for plant-based products. And there's even a media campaign. Let's get you some soy milk. Real milk needs no shaking. And so, the War of the Milks began. With Team Plant on one side and Team Cow on the other. Wow! Wow! No cow! Some on Team Plant have caved into the pressure to stop saying milk, while others are sticking to their guns. Anyway, what set off this war? Well, for one thing, cow milk sales have been plummeting for years, while plant milk sales have been skyrocketing. But why are people drinking less cow's milk? What exactly makes something a milk anyway? And who's winning this war? To get the dairy industry side of things, we had to go undercover, into the belly of the beast. Is this where Mar-a-Lago is? So we're here at the Dairy Forum, which has been described as the premier event for dairy executives. We're here to speak to a dairy executive to see if they have beef with anyone in the plant-based foods industry. Thank you. We're inside the Ritz-Carlton. Everyone here is wearing suits. I'm wearing my camouflage outfit. Okay, so it wasn't all that undercover, but I definitely was in the minority. As a journalist and a lactose intolerant. All the snacks here are dairy snacks. Everything has tons of cheese. Seems to be a very lactose-filled, creamy sauce. Anyway, I tried talking to a lot of people. Can I bother you guys for a sec? Can I bother you for a sec? I'm a documentary filmmaker, and I'm working on a documentary about the dairy industry. I was wondering if either of you guys would be interested in like a one or two minute interview. Just your kind of thoughts on plant-based alternatives. I don't think I have time. Oh uh, yeah, probably not. Your company wouldn't allow me. I don't think so. No? Okay. We haven't had very much luck. But eventually, people opened up. Should plant-based milks be called milk? No. Definitely should not use the word milk. I don't really care if they call it. I think calling it milk confuses people. I don't think they're milk. The definition of milk as I know it means it comes from an animal. I just think it's totally confusing consumers. The nutritional profile. The nutritional properties. The nutritional content. Is so different. Significantly different. It's way different than what they can make out of all of them. They're using the word milk because they get some sort of benefit. I think it comes across more as petty. What alternative names would you have in mind for nut milks or... Maybe it'd be more of a juice. Beverage. Beverage. Juice. Drink. Beverage. Um, there's all kinds of things. Most people at the dairy conference seem convinced that milk needs to come from an animal or have certain nutrients. But do they have a point? First, let's start with the Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA. For every food category, the FDA has what's called a standard of identity. Their definition for milk? The lacteal secretion obtained by the complete milking of one or more healthy cows. But that definition hasn't been strictly enforced. Otherwise, neither goat's milk nor sheep's milk would count as milk. The language is meant to protect consumers from deceptive companies that sell poor quality or imitation foods that look like more expensive ones. People have been using the word milk for plant products throughout human history. In medieval Europe, the Catholic Church actually banned dairy and meat as a form of fasting on holy days, which at one point meant every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So what did people do instead? They made almond milk, and occasionally hazelnut and pistachio milks, and cooked with it. And they actually called it milk. Anyway, after new branches of Christianity gained popularity, these restrictions on meat and dairy were lifted. But let's go beyond Europe. Scholars have traced the earliest mention of soy milk to 14th century China. It got so popular there that by the 1700s, it was being sold as street food. And in Southeast Asian, Indian, and African cuisines, coconut milk has been used as a base for curries for centuries. And some of those cultures used the word milk to describe the liquid of both plants and animals. In 1828, Noah Webster, yeah, the dictionary guy, released the first edition of his famous dictionary. In it, milk was given a secondary definition, the white juice of certain plants. So really, if we look at history and the rest of the world, it's obvious that something doesn't need to lactate to be a milk. 
But what about when it comes to nutrition? Are plant milks just as nutritious as dairy? To answer that, I headed to Buffalo, New York. We're here at Elmhurst 1925. Elmhurst is a former dairy milk plant that now exclusively produces plant-based milks. That's their chief scientist, Cheryl. Cheryl. Hi. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet yeah. you. She took us on a tour of their plant milk factory. Big question, how do you milk a nut? First, we gotta get you all dressed up. We are covering Tavish's beard. <laughs> Tavish, I love your style. So. Behind these doors, we're gonna learn how to milk a nut. This is the world of milking nuts. Right? Milking nuts. And today, they were milking oats. First, the oats travel up this chute. See them start going up to the top? And are then dropped down here to be washed. You'll be able to see a little bit of the oats trickle down. Now this is where Elmhurst uses its patented hydro release technology, which was invented by Cheryl herself. It mostly comes down to this, putting the nuts through a super high pressure power wash. Not once. It's already started to be milked. Not twice. It's continuing. But three times. So it's the water pressure that's essentially removing the layers yes, from the nuts. Right. They haven't they, been crushed. There's no crushing. There's no crushing. <laughs> to make to make nut milk, you usually have to crush your nuts and blend them with water and thickening agents to make milk. But the hydro release process is different. Like, if you took a high powered washer and sprayed something, it doesn't destroy it, it just takes it off. Oh, layer like layer by layer. The natural oils and nutrients and the proteins are all released from each other. This is why we don't have to add anything. Whoa, that looks really creamy. Can I, can I like, yeah. like, and then it'll go over to some other tanks where it's heated and pasteurized, homogenized, just like you would dairy milk. And we're gonna grab a sample. And you know, said it's hot. There you go. What are the ingredients in this? Whole grain oat. And? Water. That's it? There's just two things? Yep. Should you guys be recognized as a milk? Should you guys be in the milk aisle? We absolutely should be recognized as milk. A lot of dairy folks say that plant-based milks don't have the same nutritional value. Ah, but nutritive plant milks do. We can have six to eight grams or more of protein that's naturally contained because of the amount of nuts we use. So exactly how nutritious are plant-based milks compared to cow's milk? Well, cow's milk is admittedly a well-balanced source of nutrients like fat, carbohydrates, and proteins. And it's packed with a diverse array of vitamins and minerals. Plant-based milks don't have that sort of all-in-one nutrition. Vitamin B12, for example, is often missing from plant-based foods. But that's the thing with plant milks. They each offer something different nutritionally. Oat milk, for example, has more fiber than cow's milk, which has none. Almond milk has way fewer calories than cow's milk. And soy milk has a lot of protein, about as much as cow's milk. Altogether, plant milks have virtually no cholesterol, while cow's milk can be packed with it. And plant milks are often fortified with the vitamins and minerals they lack. Families are very diverse right now with regards to their biogenomic needs. I might like the omega-3s and 6s from walnuts, whereas you might want a beta-glucans and oat milk. So which one of these plant milks tastes the best? Tristan. Yes, so what do you do here? I am the corporate executive R&D chef. So these taste the way they do in part because of you? Yes. Wow. All right, let's go ahead and taste them. Her almond. Mm, I love almond milk. Hazelnut. I taste the hazelnut. Hazelnut is not my favorite nut. Walnut. Wow, you put maple syrup in this. No, wait, no, this no, is just walnut. That's walnut, cane sugar, and a little touch of salt. Wow. Wow. Oat. It's really creamy and like fatty. Got the sides of my mouth like feeling. Mouthfeel. It's mouth a better feel. mouthfeel. Yeah. Cashew. Whoa. Mm. There's something. Majestic. This, this majestic. A lot of people will tell us this is the one to one replacement for a whole fat mm -hmm. dairy milk. This is a magical nut. Really? You, you <laughs> like this the best? <laughs> that thing was amazing. It's different no? Yeah. It's so creamy. I think I just don't like milk that much. <laughs> <laughs> So we're going upstairs to attend a talk by someone who makes vegan cheese. Plant-based products have been skyrocketing for a number of years. She's recently been embroiled in a lawsuit because she uses the term butter in one of her products. Now what does this mean for all of you? That's Miyoko Shinner. She's the founder of Miyoko's, a company that makes plant-based butter, cheese, and more. So this is what I propose, that we redefine dairy as something coming from milk, and that milk can come from either animals or from plants. Yeah, so we have the tasting of 6.30. Okay, so this is the cheddar. You don't need this one? Wow. This is cheddar, but without cow's milk. It has that sort of like umami flavor. It's the culturing. Right. It's really just taking cashews and then inoculating it with dairy cultures and transforming just plain sweet cashews into something that tastes like cheese. What's the relationship been like between dairy producers and plant-based foods producers? The incumbent industry is threatened by the plant-based industry. They're seeing the loss of their shelf space to 
almond milk or vegan cheese. Uh, there was a lawsuit filed against us about the word butter on our packaging. So there are people that are very upset, but you know, we're just at a shifting point in consumption of food where people aren't gonna be eating the same way 20 years from now. So I'm supposed to eat this and give a reaction? Yeah. Off the charts. I would totally eat this again. Really nice umami, like great coverage on the palate. It's excellent. This That's is delicious. I like the yeah, yeah. creamy texture. The taste. It's missing. The cream is missing. You know, dairy products have been plummeting for a number of years. In 1970, the average American drank 247 pounds of milk annually. Today, it's more like 147 pounds. And meanwhile, plant-based products, you know, have surged like 61% in the last five years. So why are people drinking less cow's milk? Well, for one, a growing number of people think avoiding dairy is better for their digestive health. Two, some are switching to plant-based options like almond, soy, and oat. And three, some people have ethical concerns. Today on dairy farms, cows are constantly in a state of being pregnant and lactating at the same time. The babies get taken away as soon as they're born. The mothers mourn, the babies are raised in isolation. Then there's four, the environmental considerations. Livestock like dairy cows are responsible for a quarter of all methane emissions in the US. And methane is a big contributor to global warming. It traps heat in the atmosphere with an intensity that's 28 times stronger than carbon dioxide. Now, it's true, some of the nuts used to make milk take a toll on our water supply. In California, it takes an entire gallon of water to grow one almond. But it takes way more water to produce a gallon of cow's milk than almond milk. I really do feel that people want to buy products that make them feel better. You know, they're saving the world with every bite or every drink. And that's really what's driving the growth of this movement. If somebody gave you that at like a party. I wouldn't know that it wasn't dairy. I wouldn't think twice about it. I would think it was like a cream cheese with chive. I wouldn't really think about it, especially after the first glass of wine. The texture, the whole texture is does not really mm. recall cheese. So where do we go from here? Well, so far, Team Plant has won a number of big cases in court, when they've been sued by the dairy industry for misleading consumers. In one case, the court ruled that a reasonable consumer would not assume that two distinct products have the same nutritional content. In another, the court said that if people were deceived by plant milks, then they'd probably also think veggie bacon contains pork, or that e-books are made out of paper. Ultimately, it's about making sure the consumer understands what it is that these products are. That's Dr. Steven Ostroff. He used to work at the FDA, and he's currently being blinded by the sun. For many of these products, they make it abundantly clear that it's from almond. You know, it says it's that this is non-dairy. It's a picture of an almond. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You'd be hard-pressed to say that any reasonable consumer would be misled about what it is that they're consuming. But this war of words isn't exclusive to the U.S. In Europe, dairy-style words like milk, butter, and yogurt can only be used for foods made from animal milk, with some exceptions. And in Canada, the popular protein drink Muscle Milk was forced to change its name to Muscle... Milk? Malaka? MLK? I think it's just like any shift in, in human history, right when it's happening is when it's most challenging. But these so-called alternative products in about 10 years will no longer be the alternative. They're going to become the majority at some point. The conversation will change. The politics of food labeling will probably continue long after this video. But between us, it doesn't really matter that almonds, oats, walnuts, and peanuts don't lactate. They make for pretty delicious milk. And they always have. Hey guys, thanks for watching. So what do you guys think? Should plant-based milks like almond milk and soy milk be called milk? Or should those terms be exclusive to the dairy industry like they are in Europe? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to share this video with your friends to see what they think too.